I was attacked by bears on the way here. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Hey, y'all come up here and sit down. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him and it's made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe in this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have. What come after that? Yeah, it can and will be. It can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, to the saints in the chat room, to the saints around the world that we never even met. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Hey, big old but you're gonna sit right in the walkway. Everybody gotta come through. You the longest butt. You got the longest butt in here. Everybody got to go like this over you, like this. Mm. You know, it ain't no room in here. You know, they want to get you a seat. You prefer sitting on the floor. All right. I ain't going to get all in your business then. Couch mess with your sciatica. <laughs> You'll know when you get older. <laughs> um, last week, what did we discuss last week? Last week we were, was that Mark 2 last week? We was just about to get into what the Christians call the Sermon on the Mount, I think. That's definitely what we covering today. You know what I'm saying? We definitely covering that today. Uh, but last week we was talking about, I think we David. were talking about David. David yeah, how he came in and he ate, ate the bread, the show bread. Yeah, because so, they were accusing his disciples of breaking the Sabbath. Right. All right, so the disciple was accused by the Pharisees of breaking the Sabbath. Remember, Yahushua keeps on finding these moments to oppose the Pharisees, to kind of show them and to show the world, you know, like their thinking is not always right, right? Because at this point in time, the Pharisees have been exalted, right? You got the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and they're, they're kind of exalted to be leaders of our community. You know what I mean? And so now Yahushua is kind of finding situations to put himself, put himself in opposition to the Pharisees. And he kind of breaking it down for them like, nah, y'all haven't read what David did. And so he went through all everything that David did. Then after that, we read uh, we read a little bit further into it um, uh, about how what came after that. I'm trying to think. It was a. Uh, Let me see. What was it? What came after that? It was something after that, right? Oh yeah, we we uh we talked about the disciples. He sent the disciples off, um, and went they they went through all the towns, and he was preparing them for. It. He said, "Like, don't take nothing with you now." He like, "Don't take nothing with you. Whatever you got, take it with you." He said, "But listen, when you get there, find a worthy person's home." All right. Remember, he says, "Find somebody worthy's home," and then he says, "Stay there." Right. So he was teaching the disciples how they should how they should, you know, what I'm saying serve, how they should go out and they should try to try to convince people to uh to, to believe in him and believe believe in the word as the scripture is said. Right. So he gave very specific instructions and we kind of got a first glimpse of his teaching when he started to teach. He is like, don't think that I came here for peace, but I came here for the sword. Right. So he's he's trying to he's trying to kind of illuminate the different ways that that he's presenting himself right we're gonna look more into some of the specific can you turn that down baby we're gonna look more into some of the specifics in how he teaches right when the people remember we read a couple times and the people was like wow they were amazed it's like wow he teaches like one who has authority not like the scribes right so he don't teach like the regular teachers of the book when he teach, the people felt like he like he might think he owns something. He might think he can make some calls. They're looking like that man teach like like he know exactly what's going on. Like he teaching like matter of fact. This is exactly what it means. This is exactly what it say. This is exactly what happened. Right. And so that was different for them. They looking at it like, oh, no, he, you know, what I'm saying? this guy's a little different. 
But now we we didn't really get the details of what he was teaching at that point. The sermon, the so-called sermon on the mount, right? It it goes into details of how Yahushua was talking to these people. And so I want us to ingest it because it's a lot of stuff that we've read over so far that we haven't really taken the time to really ingest. Right? We haven't really taken the time to like we read through this whole book so far, right? We read through the whole New Testament. And already we've heard a lot of stuff that's brand new. But what happens is, is because we've, we've grown we the whole Old Testament. What did I say? New Testament. Yeah, we went to the whole Old Testament. Now we're in the New Testament and we, we, we're starting to hear things that are brand new stuff we've never heard of. We never heard of a baptism. We've never heard of it. You know what I'm saying? Like we've never heard anything called baptism as a practice, right? As something to do to wash away sin. That's just, that concept has never been heard of. That's brand new. We never heard nobody talk to us about a resurrection of life. Right? These are new things that are that's, that's come an everlasting life. This is a new concept that's just promoted like it's regular. Right? It's regular to us because we've come up in a Christian era. Right? We come up in a, in a so-called Christian co uh, country. We come up and, and we come from the Roman Catholic Church that 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 kind of set up everything that ended up being our slavery and they taught us that Christ, that christian uh, uh religion and taught it to our people right you have the colonizers that have gone to many many nations and they've they've taught people to be christians so these concepts for us are normal and expected and when we read them we forget to put ourselves in the shoes of the people that's that's hearing this stuff for the first time when they hearing this stuff it's like, what are you talking about? I've never heard this stuff. Like, this is, you got two groups of people. It's two, it's some people that's uncomfortable with it. It's like, when I hear that, I'm like, mm, that don't sound familiar. Then you got another group of people that's like, wow, look at that cool new thing. This guy, this guy knows what he's talking about, right? The people that's saying, I'm uncomfortable with it, is looking at the people that's saying, look at, wow, look at that new cool new thing. They looking at them like, you guys are idiots. Y'all will fall for anything. Right. Meanwhile, the other people looking at like, ah, you guys just know too much for your own good. And in everybody's mind, everybody's right. Right. So I want you all to think about like right now, there's Islam, there's Christianity, there's Judaism, there's Hinduism, there's Buddhism, there's Scientology, there's Mormonism, there's Jehovah's Witnesses. There's all these different things. Right. And everybody thinks they're right. Everybody. It was no different then. Right? Everybody is persuaded that what they believe is the right thing. And the group that they with is the right group. So I want y'all to put keep that in your mind as these people are interacting. There's some people that believe what y'all was talking about. Some people that don't. And the people that don't, it look crazy to people that do. Like the people that do, y'all look crazy to the people that don't. You look nuts. You look like idiots. You like sheep. You know how people be calling, hey, sheep, y'all follow anything. That's your sheep. Then you got the man that pop up and he say, follow me, be my sheep. They probably look at that like, man, he just disrespecting y'all in your faith. But you have to have that in your mind because these times are, might come back up for us. Right? Where we got to put ourselves in a mindset of like, oh, the world going to call us stupid for doing these things, for following this stuff, for following this prophet that pop up or this person that. This person that gets to showing all this stuff, you might, you might, world might call you stupid. Be like, man, you an idiot. You fall for that. But we got to brace ourselves and be like, man, it ain't about what nobody think. It's just about what is the truth? What does the book say? We can shave all the rest of that stuff away. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what we're talking about. This is uh, Matthew chapter five, verse one. M m yeah. So you prefer to sit on the floor. You sit on the floor. You block everybody. Everybody got to go like this around you. Then you wait and now, all of a sudden, now you want to sit in the chair when I offered you a chair. Oh, it's too soft. So it's the, it's the in-between between the floor and the chair and, the, and a nice soft couch. I pay for this whole couch. You ain't good enough. For you. Good gracious. Ungrateful darn kid. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> this is... Uh, this is Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. No, hold on. So hold on. Look, look at what he first started with. He said, blessed are what? The very first one? Poor in spirit. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit. For what reason? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We've never heard about no kingdom of heaven. Right? It's just little things that we take for granted. We read the whole Old Testament. At what point did somebody talk to us about a kingdom of heaven? I mean, it was prophesied. Who? Isaiah. What did he say? What did Isaiah say about the kingdom of heaven? Well, I guess it wasn't specific, like the kingdom of heaven, but it was like this phrase. God is going to and we will live with him. And this phrase has never been this. We've never heard this phrase. Right. When when you talk about kingdom of heaven, the kingdom that is of heaven. You wouldn't know what? Like, what does that mean? It's a kingdom that's in heaven. And you telling me the, the poor in spirit, it's theirs. The kingdom that's in heaven. Right? The type of stuff that they're listening to is brand new. This is new stuff. So when they hear it, they got to try to make sense of this stuff. And y'all, she was not explaining it. He's not breaking down. Look, look, the kingdom of heaven is actually just, he's not breaking it down for him. He's just saying things to him. And they got to take it in real time, process it, and decide, is this guy real or is this guy a phony? a difficult decision to make on the fly unless you like a stupid you know what i'm saying gullible young man and you look at him and it's like i don't know i like the guy that person is gonna walk into the kingdom that gullible person that will fall for anything if it wasn't yahushua it would have been a liar and they would have believed the liar the same way they believed yahushua but because it was yahushua they will enter into the life. They will enter into eternal life because they're gullible. But you know, we're going to get to where y'all should say, you got to come to me like a child. How easy is it to trick a child? That's, that's why we're so protective of them. Right? Let's see. Keep going. He said, bless. Uh, read it again. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? We've never heard about no kingdom of heaven. Most of y'all sure. So far, y'all grab uh grab John chapter 5 real quick. This is John chapter 5. Go to uh verse uh verse 22, 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. These are concepts. We read John chapter 5 about two, three weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago. Right. We read the whole thing. John chapter five. Do you know how much new stuff he introduced just in that? This John chapter uh, five, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. We've never heard the phrase everlasting life given this way where it's like, hey, if you do this you get everlasting life in exchange. That concept is new. We don't have no prophet that just laid it out plainly like that. Where we can just say, oh, okay, yeah, I know. He's talking about what Isaiah said, or he's talking about what Jeremiah said, or he, that's, that's what Moses is talking about. Everything that we got, the impression that we would have got is, the best is, we live long in the day. Long in the land. Our women won't be barren. But it's a foregone conclusion that you're going to die. Not with him. He said, listen, if you believe on, just think about this is a guy, special guy for sure. He'll be doing some cool stuff. But this guy walk up to you and say, all you got to do is believe on me and believe on the guy who sent me. You'll live forever. You know how nuts that would have to sound? You being a believer of the law? You being a follower of Moses? That sounds crazy coming from him. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God 
and they that here shall live. Right? He said, the hour is coming and now, now is where the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And what? And they that here shall live. He's talking to you about resurrection. He's talking to you about living again after you die. Again, these are concepts that we haven't heard. It's what we read a couple weeks ago. This, these are new concepts. So we have to take that into account that this guy is not just coming up and just repeating stuff that Moses said. He's saying new stuff. He's giving you new promises at this point. Right? And you have to understand that as somebody who's like, no, nah, we follow what Moses say. You have to make a decision on the fly. Is this according to Moses or is this against Moses? Which is the same struggle that folks have today. They try to reconcile it, right? They'd be like, no, nah, Yahushua. But it's the same reason that they say Yahushua didn't bring a new covenant. He brought a renewed covenant. That is the same struggle that the people in real time are having to deal with. It's just people now are weak. They weak minded. So they compromise in ways that don't make no sense. Our fathers was a little bit stronger in the mind. They looking like, no, this got to, some of them is looking like this has to make sense to me. And if it doesn't, then I'm about to stone you. Period. Right. We about to go ahead and do away with you because what you're saying doesn't make sense to me. I'm not about to hear and play around and be like, yeah, no, maybe, maybe these two pieces kind of fit together. No. Nah. If it don't line up, I'm about to stone you. And that's why they wanted to kill him. Because it didn't line up for them. They looking like this guy is getting away with it. And I can't quite put my finger on it. But we're going to kill you because you're dangerous for our people. That's how they looked at him. And that's what Yahushua will come for. Pick a side. Don't stand in the darn middle. That's what he told. That's what he told us last week. I didn't come for peace. I came for the sword. He said, I'm going to put people at variance with their own household. The reason is because he's making everybody in the household pick a side. One person going to be like, no, nah, I follow y'all. Sure. The other person like, man, I want to do my, I want to do my, what I want to do. I want to live my life. I want to have a little fun. Why everything got to be, you know what I mean? Why everything got to be God, God, God. I just want to, you know what I mean? But now you pick the side. Guess what? The person in the house is like, no, nah, I'm rolling with y'all. Sure. It might not go well, right? That might be a little fight. And that's what he came for, right? Grab uh, Ecclesiastes. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 4. He's talking to us about the resurrection. We've never heard of this. This concept is not a real concept for us. It's not a real thing for us, right? It's not a real thing for have somebody say, oh, honor me with the same honor that you give the father. What? First of all, what? Then after that, oh, the father, he can make people alive. I can do it too. No, I'm serious. Look, there's going to be a day when I'm going to speak. And when I speak, the people that are dead, they're going to be living again. Like, what, what is this guy talking about? This guy sounds nuts. Sounds like a kook, right? This is uh this is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter nine verse four. For to him that is joined to all the living there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look, if you got if you had to choose who gonna win the fight, right? You got a fight right in front of you. You got a dog on one side. Bad dog to that boy. Ah, drooling down the darn side. Big old canine. Ah, ah, right? And on the other side, they like, who gonna face against this dog? Darn Mufasa climb out that thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Darn hair, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shake yourself down. Ah, stretch a little bit. So you ever seen a, like a real lion in real life? Me either, right? But on TV, them things look like they're about this bigger darn round, right? Them boy be big. You know what I'm saying? You got you a pit bull. Now, pit bull, when you see a pit bull, it ain't nobody's walking up to a pit bull like, hey, that they don't know. Nobody. You see a pit bull you don't know, you're going to take a little step. You're going to be like, is he good? All right. Huh? All right. Well, you crazy. But listen, 
Most people not going to walk up on the pit bull. Everybody going to respect that pit bull. Like, I don't know him. He looked like he might be serious, right? But now when that lion pop up, who's winning that fight? The lion. Easy money. Nobody picking the pit bull. So the, when we only see the pit bull, we looking like, that's a bad boy there. He like, he might tear something up. You know, big old buff pits. You know what I'm saying? You know the ones that's pigeon toed. You know what I'm saying? Be walking around like that. You know what I'm saying? Big old buff pit. But the lion pop up. We don't even know who that pit is no more. Right? Because the lion is there. That's Mufasa. I never seen you saw when Scar tried to get at Mufasa? Please. Easy money. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Please. Scar had to catch him on the edge. You know what I'm saying? Scar had to catch him like that. You know they're coming out with a uh, prequel. That's crazy. Yeah, they're coming out with a prequel. You know what I'm saying? The Mufasa prequel. Oh, you y'all about to see that boy get down. How he came up. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't be knowing, you know what I'm saying? Y'all be looking like, you know what I'm saying, Mufasa, man, he's just, you know, just a righteous shit that none of y'all don't know that we be having pasts. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Y'all about to see Mufasa's young days. You know what I'm saying? But listen, the lion is going to win over the dog. So what, what Solomon is telling us right here in Ecclesiastes is he's saying it is better. Everybody know it's better to be a lion than a dog. Right? If you got to fight, I got to choose one to win. I'm going to choose the lion over the dog. But Solomon say, it's better to be a dog that's alive than a lion that's dead. Because as a dog is alive, at least you have hope. But tell us about the dead, Solomon. For the living know that they shall die. Right? At least the living can look forward to death. You know what I'm saying? Like, the living, like, I know it's coming more one day. He said, look, it's better to expect death to be coming one day because guess what the, de the dead know? But the dead know not anything. The dead don't know anything. When the dead is dead, they're dead. He's telling us there's nothing left. You don't know anything. Look, when you when you living, it's kind of sad. It's like, man, dang, one day I'm going to die. He's saying, it's better to have that thought than to have no thoughts at all because you're dead. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also, their love, their hatred, their envy is now perished. Right? He said, they ain't got no love for nobody. Why? Because they're dead. They, ain't, they don't even hate nobody. Guess why? Because they're dead. Once you're dead, that's it. Solomon is telling us this in the Old Testament. You know why he's telling us this? Because there's no concept of living forever. That, that, that's not a thing, right? It's like, what? What are you talking about? What do you mean live forever? Yahushua is introducing something new here. This is a new promise that he's given us. He's promising us, if you believe on me, you will live forever. He said the same thing. Maybe three, four, five weeks ago, we read John chapter three. Remember, we read John chapter chapter three. And we said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Right? Again, he was talking about living forever. These are new concepts that we listen to. Keep going. Watch this. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart. For God now accepted thy works. Let thy garments be always white, and let thy head lack no ointment. Live joyfully with the wife whom thou lovest all the days of thy life, of thy vanity, which he has given thee under the sun, all the days of thy vanity. For that is thy portion in this life, and in thy labor which thou takest under the sun. Whatsoever thy hand find to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you go. He said, listen, when you go to the grave, there is not work, there is not knowledge, there is not wisdom. And baby boy, baby girl, that's where you headed. He's saying the only hope you got is things will end up as nothing for you. Do you know why that was his mindset? 
because he believed Moses. Right? This, I don't care what y'all say, this is what faith looks like before Yahushua. Right now, we look at this and be like, oh, that's just depressing. And the only reason we had that thought is because Yahushua introduced to us, oh, you can live forever. So the idea of somebody saying, oh, it just all stops for us, that's depressing. This book changed my life. But when all you got is Moses, to, grab uh, Exodus, Exodus chapter, uh, give me Exodus chapter 23, verse 21. This Exodus chapter 23, verse 21. When all you got is Moses coming to you with laws and commandments, and he tell you, look, if you do X, Y, and Z, y'all will bless you. But if you don't, he going to curse you. He gave us a whole bunch of curses. Cursed will you be in the field. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cursed will you be in the house. Cursed will you be. Just lighten our butts up with curse. You going you gonna, you gonna to go in. It's going to be a thousand of y'all. And it's going to be a couple people that chase y'all every darn direction. You going to go and you going to be below. And you going to have to borrow from every nation. You going to be the bottom. He gave us. Just lit us up with curses. Negative things that's gonna happen to us if we don't do what? Obey the commandment. If we don't obey the commandment. Look, look what he told us if we do obey it, though. This is Exodus chapter uh 23, verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do the all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies, and an adversary adversary unto your adversaries. For my angel shall go before thee. And bring thee into the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You shall not bow down to their gods nor serve them, nor do after their works, but you shall utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Now, he said, if you do these commandments, do some of them. Go back. Let's see. Verse 22. Let's see. Let's see if he say, if you just try your best to keep most of the commandments. But if you indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. If if you do most of what I speak. All that I speak. If you do, I mean the least, at least do the least of what I speak. All that I speak. That's it. The man said all that I speak. If you do all of it, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. You know what I'm saying? Your enemies, when they try to mess with you, hey, 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 who you talking to? He said, I'm going to run up on you. Your enemies, I'm going to run up on you. I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. So look, when we get, when we read the law and we say, you know what? I, I believe, look, we don't have no New Testament. We don't have no, no Yahushua. If you're a faithful person and you believe the word of God, guess what you believe in? If I keep the law, he will be an enemy to my enemies. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 15. This Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 4. He said, you got to do all this thing. I'm telling you, a lot of people don't believe the law. And we read a couple weeks ago, y'all, she was said, the reason why y'all don't believe me is because y'all didn't believe Moses. We have to make sure we put ourselves in position to believe Moses. When we read this stuff, we got to look at it and be like, no, nah, that's what it say. Man said all. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say some. He didn't say the least. He didn't say do your best. He said you have to keep all the commandments. And if you do, I'll be an enemy to your enemies. All right? It's Deuteronomy chapter 15. Give me verse 4. Watch the book say. Say when there shall be no poor among you, for the Lord shall greatly bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God gives thee for an inheritance to possess it. He said, look, I'm going to bless you in this land to where there's no more poor people. Right? That's what he just told. That's a promise. Listen, save when there's no more poor among you. I'm going to bless you in this. Before that, he gave us a commandment like, man, you got to open your hand up to the poor. Make sure you give to the poor at all times, right? Then after that, you know what he said? Except for the times where there's no poor. Because I'm going to bless your butt when you get to that land, boy. I'm going to hook you up now. 
right? When you get to the land, I'm going to hook you up. You know, everything, look, don't let nobody lie to you. Everything God promised come with strings attached. Watch what he say next. Only if thou carefully. Ah, ah, ah. Only now. I'm going to look. You got poor people in your land? <laughs> let me tell you something, boy. <laughs> I'm going to bless you now. You get in that land? I'm going to take care of you, boy. You ain't going to have no more poor. Ah, no. Only. You know what I'm saying? Only if you do what? If you carefully hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah your God. You have to carefully listen unto the voice of Yahuwah your God. What else? To observe to do all these commandments, which I command Observe to do the day. best you can with the most of the commandments that you are able to do it with. All these commandments, which I command thee this day. That got that. He said, you got to do all of them. But if you do it, guess what? You ain't got to worry about no poor people. All y'all going to be doing well. You know how Jay-Z talk? You know what I'm saying? You broke if your friend is broke. What's that? How that song go? He said, you know what I'm saying? He pretty much, he, he be saying. No one will if, fall because everyone will be each other's crush. Yeah, he said, if everybody rich, then you rich. If all your friends is rich, then you rich. But if you the only one rich in your crew and all your friends are poor, Jay-Z would say you poor. Y'all saying, huh, Jay-Z would be cool in the land here. Because everybody would be. Listen, only though, be very careful now to hearken on to everything I tell you and do all that I command you. Not least, not most, not the best you can, not try your hardest. Do all that I command you. And if you do that, oh, it ain't even going to be no poor people in the land. You ain't even got to worry about that last commandment I gave you. You know what I'm saying? You just scratch that one from the record because there won't be no poor people to lend to. Right? Grab, uh, grab uh, Exodus 15. Exodus chapter 15. Give me verse 23. I just want y'all to see the promises. This is law. Right. Before there was a Yahushua, before there was a, a New Testament, this is what you had to believe in. There was no eternal life. There was no resurrection of death. There was none of this. The person who believed this is the height of their belief. If I do the best I can, that means y'all will be an enemy to my enemy and it won't be no poor people in the land. If I if 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 I keep everything in the law, there will be no poor people in the land and y'all be an enemy. But that's what you got to believe. That's your hope. That's why Solomon told him, like, listen, at the end of it, you still got to die. You know what I'm saying? Things can be great for some people. Things can be. But, but at the end of it, everybody's going to die. And where are you about to go, young man and young lady and all that? There is no wisdom. There is no love. You know what I'm saying? You don't hate nobody because you don't have anything. You don't even think. Right? This is uh this is Exodus chapter 15. What verse? 23? Mm. Hold on. 26. 26? It's Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. Watch what the book say. And he said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah thy God and will do that which is right in his sight. So look, if you will diligently hearken unto the voice of Yahuwah thy God and do that which is right in his sight, what else? And will give ear unto his commandments. Oh, so this one, he didn't say all. He just said, give ear unto his commandments. That could be some, that could be least. You never really know. I wonder what he about to say next. And keep all his statutes. I got that. You got to do them all. That's what he said. He said, listen, this is the deal. If you do everything I told you, what will happen? Strings always attached. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah that healeth thee. This is what you believe. Give me Deuteronomy chapter five, right? This is what, if you a believer in the word of the most high God, you believe, man, listen, I'm going to keep all this law. Y'all going to be an enemy to my enemies. I'm going to keep all this law. Ain't going to be no poor people in the land. I'm going to keep all this law and all them sicknesses that they had in Egypt. Ain't none of them going to touch me. That is faith. Right? That is the height of faith at that point. I believe everything that y'all told me. Therefore, I know I'm not going to get sick like I was in Egypt. That's not just going to happen. Because he told me it wasn't going to happen. I believe it. That is faith, right? It's Deuteronomy chapter 5. Give me verse 4. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount of the midst of the fire. No, nah, drop on down. Give me verse 30. Give me 32. 
It's Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 32. You shall observe to do, therefore, as Yahuwah your God has commanded you. Watch this. You shall not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. That means don't sin, right? Don't go left. Don't go right. Keep going. You shall walk in all the ways which Yahuwah your God has commanded you. You shall walk in some of the ways, most of the ways, all, least of the ways. All the ways. Do the bare minimum. Do the best you can. You shall walk in all the ways. Keep going. That you may live. And what's going to happen? And that it may be well with you. And that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. You know what I'm saying? I mean, do you want to you want to extend your life a little bit? You know what I'm saying? You want to prolong it? You want to extend your life a little bit? I'll tell you what. Do everything I told you to do. I'll give you a couple more years. You know what I'm talking about? I'll give you how many years you want? I'll give you, I'll give you a couple more years. Just do everything I told you to do, though. Those are the promises of the Most High God. That if you keep, not some, not all, not the best you can, but if you keep all the commandments, all the statutes, and obey his voice in all ways, and hearken on to everything that he say, well, you know what? He'll be an enemy to your enemies. He'll make sure there ain't no more poor in the land. He'll make sure you don't get them sicknesses that, that people got in Egypt. Oh, and you know what? You go ahead, but you know what I'm saying? Extend your life a little bit. Put the, you know what I'm saying? He put that extendo on your arm. You know what I'm saying? A life. You ever seen? You ever seen them boy? You know what I'm saying? They got what they call, you know what I'm saying? Back in the back in the day, they called it a uh, they called it a lemon squeeze. You know what I'm saying? Back in when we was when we was in school, they used to call it a lemon squeeze. I think you know what I'm saying. Kids now they think it's new. They used to call it a lemon squeeze. You step that thing on the top of a Glock, and that thing turned into a fully automatic. All you gotta do is hold it. But the thing wrong with that is it shoot off so fast that a Glock usually hold maybe ten. You know what I'm saying? If you got a big Glock, it'll hold seventeen shots. But usually you hold like 10, 9, 10 shots. So when you got a fully automatic, you only got 10 shots. You hold it. Blah, and that's what it sounds like. And that's it. Now you empty. And when you empty in the gun, blah, clap, it pops to the back like that. So it, blah, that's it. So you ain't even got a chance to do nothing with it. So you know what the boys had to start doing. It's a, you know, got to get the extendo. So they go get these extra long clips. I'm thinking, curve down like that. So you got this little pistol. But the clip is three sizes sizes of the pistol. That way, when you put the squeeze on it, blip, they call it the lemon squeeze because you squeeze it like a lemon. And that thing just... And then you just spray up a whole wall. And then it empty out, the gun get hot. Drop it and get up out of there, right? Well, guess what? They got a new version of it now. But they The kids nowadays, they don't call it the lemon squeeze. What they call it? No, they call it a switch. You don't hear the rapper talking about with the switch on it, this, that, another. That's what they talking about. They talking about. They, they, they talking about a switch. And what the switch is, it's the same exact thing. It turned a weapon to a fully automatic. But you gotta have an extendo on there, otherwise, it ain't gonna last as long as you think it is. So what Yah is trying to tell you is, if you keep all the law. He put the extender on that switch for you. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm saying? He extended a little bit. He'll put that thing on there. That thing come down right there. That way, when you out there shooting, it lasts a little bit. You can hear what you want to hit. You can enjoy your life a little bit. And then what Solomon is trying to tell you is, once you run out of shots, that's it, buddy. There's nothing else. That's it. That's all you got. That's the end of it. Ain't no reloading. That's it. Now, Yahushua is popping up and telling us about the reload. And he said, when I reload you, this extendo never runs out. Unlimited ammo. You know what I'm saying? You ever put in a code on uh, Grand Theft Auto? You know what I'm saying? You put that thing in and it got unlimited ammo. So you just running down the darn street. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shooting everybody up, right? Well, that's what happens. Yahushua is saying you can go forever. Forever. These are new concepts. These promises did not come from the law. He is telling us something brand new. That's important for us to know. Because when this man pops up, go back to uh, uh, chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Let's start back at verse 1. Because when this man pops up and he's telling you, Blessed is the poor in spirit, 
Because theirs will be the kingdom of heaven. We have to consider that the people listening to that is like, okay, hold on. I, kingdom of heaven, I never heard that before. Tell me a little bit more about that. Tell me more about this kingdom of heaven. Let's keep going. This is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up unto a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. They're going to inherit what? The earth. The silly Christians think when he say kingdom of heaven, you know what they think? I mean, when we die, we're going right to heaven. Is that what he said, though? He just said kingdom of heaven. So let's think about it. The poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the meek shall inherit what? The earth. So where do you think the kingdom of heaven going to be? Right. The kingdom of heaven ain't in heaven or ain't going to be in heaven. The kingdom of heaven comes down to earth. That's why the meek inherit the earth, because that's where the kingdom of heaven is. But you wouldn't know that if you don't know the prophecy. Right. When you when you pay attention to whatever so it says it plainly in Revelation, it says very plainly in Revelation. Right. But if you don't know the problem, I'm talking about them, though. Right. And Christians. If you don't know the prophecy, if, if you're a Christian, you can make up whatever you want to make up, right? But when you when you are adherent to the word and to the scriptures and you say to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this, uh, to this what? This word. This word. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them, right? When that is your mindset, it's like everybody got to speak according to the law and to the testimony. That's it. That's your only option. If you're not speaking according to that, then it ain't no light in you. When that's your mindset, you can't just make up whatever you want to make up. You can't just say, oh, you know what? I feel like when you die, you probably go to heaven. That don't make sense. No, Solomon told you what happened when you die. And Yahushua is going to tell you what happened when you die, after you die, if you are righteous. He said he's going to wake your butt right on up. Keep going. Let's see. <laughs> Blessed are they that mourn. Ratted him out quick. Blessed are they My that God, mourn. Go down there. For the they shall be comforted. The Blessed are the meat, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. He said, if you hunger and you thirst for righteousness and you do it, you're going to end up being filled. Watch this. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Uh huh. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil things against you falsely for my sake. Right? He said, he's doing that falsely now. He's like, now, these boys telling the truth. They ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? When people be saying evil stuff about you, if it's correct, you know what I'm saying? If, it, if, if, they, say, if they say foul stuff about you, but what they saying is a fair assessment of your life. He said, they ain't got nothing to do with me. Now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't talking about you now. But he said, when they lie, when they talk about your life, and they like, man, you know what? Philip, man, he just be. And then come up with a lie at the end of it. He said, oh, man, count that as a blessing. Because what? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great. Is he said, reward. rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Don't just be like, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? The man told you. You know what I'm saying? He said, be exceedingly glad. You're supposed to be like, whoa, them boys lying on me again. He told you be extra. Is what He said, be exceedingly glad. Right? Watch this. Why? For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets which were before you. Right? He said, because they persecuted the prophets before you just like that. He said, you should be happy because that means you got a reward in heaven. A Christian again, they think, oh, it's a reward in heaven. See, that's how you know you die and you go right to heaven. This is where this is where Christians get it wrong, right? Because they get to reading and stuff and they have no context. They don't have they nobody has taught them our scripture. Nobody has taught them how this stuff goes. No, no nobody has taught them the prophecy where where Daniel told her, Look, I looked into the sky and I saw one like the Son of Man coming from the sky, and the whole earth became his kingdom. Right. They never looked at that like, oh, the kingdom of heaven comes from heaven and lands on earth. 
Yahushua is the kingdom. Wow. Right? So they get to thinking like, oh, so you got a reward in heaven. That means when I die, I'm going right to heaven. Keep going. Watch this. For ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Mm -hmm. It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. All right. So I want y'all to imagine some stuff. Because he's, he's given. What I like is that he's giving you imagery. So I don't want none of the imagery to just be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's so beautiful. The salt of the earth. Da, da, da. Like, what does that mean? Right. You know, I want y'all to like have the imagery. So, everybody like eggs, right? Oh, oh my God. I love eggs. Wow. That's crazy. So, to everybody who is regular, right, and you like eggs, then you take the eggs, right, and let's say a boiled egg. You know what I'm saying? Nice boiled egg. Right? You boil that thing, you, it, and you crack it, and you get it hot. So, when you crack it, you like <laughs> trying to peel it off real quick, you know what I'm saying? Then you got it. And you finally get it. You hungry. Are you going to bite into that egg just as it is? Sometimes I do. What you going to do? A little bit of salt. A little, little salt and pepper, right? And where you put the, you probably, you probably get you a little plate. Dump a whole little pile of salt. Whole little pile of pepper. And you take your little index finger and you just mix it up like that. You know what I'm saying? After you get done mixing up, you take the egg and you dip it in there. And it's a nice little gray blend of salt and pepper. You know what I'm saying? Just like, boom, you dip it in there. And you dip it on the sides, two sides. So you got to learn how to eat an egg. You know what I'm saying? Boiled egg is two sides of the boiled egg. The bottom, if you bite into that bottom, you get right to the yellow immediately. You know what I'm saying? Oh, bite right to the yellow. But if you want to tease yourself a little bit, you bite into the top. A lot of white. You know what I'm saying? So you dip the top in the gray mixture that I put you the just whole thing made. in my mouth. Paul. <laughs> hey yo <laughs> <laughs> that was wild that was wild right there <laughs> that, was real, that was real wild <laughs> shout, shout, shout to Cam hey yo them <laughs> <laughs> boys be like hey yo <laughs> you wild <laughs> that was some wild stuff right there man what was that? That was so look you that dip it crazy. right and you dip it like that and you get the nice blend of salt and pepper right at the top, right? And then you just take a bite right of the salt and the pepper. But I want y'all to imagine when you did that, you only taste the pepper. You don't taste no salt. What would you do after that? Take more salt. You gonna add more salt? You feel like, like yeah, some more salt. I don't even taste the salt. And you do your second dip. Take a bite. You don't taste no salt. You only taste pepper. What you gonna do after that? At this point, you probably gonna take the salt and you're gonna put a little bit in your finger just to be like, what's going on with the salt? And then you're gonna taste it. And what you got a whole brand, you just bought the salt from Smith's, right? Whole thing. You put a little bit on your finger, you eat it. There's no salt taste. You just taste it's like you just tasting little little rocks. You know what I'm saying? A little grain. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't got no taste. What you gonna do with this salt? Read it again what he said. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and trodden under foot of men. That's all he's saying. Right? What he's saying is normal behavior for any human person. If I want the salt because it has a flavor, but the salt no longer has a flavor, what use is it to me? So what he's trying to tell us is... <laughs> I am placing y'all out here, Yahushua, and Yah is placing us out here for a reason. I want y'all to bring the flavor to the earth. But if I find that you don't have flavor, if you're not doing what I told you to do, if you're not fulfilling a purpose why I put you here, if I can't enjoy my darn egg, your butt gotta go. Keep going, watch this. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but mm -hmm. on a candlestick. And it gives light unto all that are in the house. Right? Imagine lighting a candle and then putting it under here. Like, you know what I'm saying? All right. Can y'all see? All right, good. Let me put it under here so it don't get no light. It don't make sense. He's saying, 
your whole purpose is to give off light. And if you get off light, do it make sense to hide? So no, what we got to do, he's what he's telling us is you got to not only give off light, which is righteousness, but you got to make it available. You got to make you got to make it available. You got to be seen. Right. You got to make what you're doing available. All right. Keep going. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto that unto all that are in the house. Mm -hmm. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. He said, "Do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets." Why would anybody think that? Right? I don't want y'all to think about the stuff you know about Christianity or the stuff you think you know about the Bible or anything. Only think about what we've read so far. All of the Old Testament and the few things that we've read over the last four or five weeks in the New Testament, in the gospel. Why in the world would he say, think not that I've come to destroy the law and the prophets? Why would someone even have that thought in their mind? Because what he's saying to him is new. Is he talking about something new? He's telling you something new. That's why he feels the need to tell you and don't think that I come to destroy the law and the prophets. Because when people are listening to him, guess what they're thinking? He got something new. He trying to replace Moses. He's saying, you don't think that I came to destroy the law and the prophets now. What did he say? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, he said, teach men so. Look, hold on. Whosoever shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach people to do so, keep going. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. He gonna go to hell. He shall be called least. He gonna be stoned in the kingdom of heaven. His enemies is not gonna be God's enemies. Read again. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Listen. If you break even the least of these commandments, guess what? You will still be called least in the kingdom of heaven. You still get into the kingdom. So before when he was just telling us, blessed are they that are poor in spirit because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who are reviled for his sake because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? Those same people could be people who break some of the commandments, even the least of them. Now we got to do some reconciling. Because the man just told us, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it. Then he come back and told us, no, if you break even the least of these, You'll be least in the kingdom. How do you get into the kingdom if you break the, the, break the commandments? Because his promise is based off of something different. Right? Because Moses told us something different, didn't he? Moses said, you got to do all of what I said. He said, don't turn to the right or to the left. He said, all oh, hearken and be very careful. Ain't he? he said, do very careful to hearken and do all of what I commanded. Gra uh, grab Deuteronomy chapter 27. Give me verse 27. It's Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 27, or verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26, and then uh, we're going to come right back to Matthew. It's Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Moses told us, do all all of my commandments keep all of my statutes be very 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 careful and pay attention to everything that i say meanwhile y'all she was saying listen if you break the least of these and at least you'll make it to least in the kingdom and the people who made it in the kingdom is blessed he said blessed are those because the kingdom of heaven is yours right so how in the world are you blessed when Moses is saying this, this is Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Curse be he that confirms. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Y'all, she was saying, blessed are you 
if you break even the least of these commandments, right? But Moses is saying this. Cursed be he that confirmed not all the words of this law to do them, and all the people shall say amen. Are they saying the same thing? No. In fact, it would appear that they're in direct contradiction of each other, wouldn't it? How you think people sitting here feeling? Once he say, look, if you break even the least of these, he just got done telling you how blessed people are for getting into the kingdom. Then he come back, he say, if you do even the least of these, this is why you got to read the book in context. These people don't know how to teach no law. They don't know nothing about none of this stuff. I respect the man better if he said, I can't accept what Yahushua will say because it contradicts Moses. I respect that better. Because at least you admitting, I don't know what this man is talking about. The one that get on my nerve is y'all who try to pretend like you know what Yahushua is talking about, but you don't understand these things. If you knew what he's talking about, you know there ain't no contradiction, and you know that he ain't teaching the same stuff that Moses is teaching. But until we can admit, like, honestly, I don't know. Y'all teach me. These people are going to keep having all this false doctrine, all this bad teaching, all this misunderstanding, all these confused people that try to make sense of it, walking around like, well, the law is all about, you know what I'm saying? On one hand, they tell you, you got to keep the law, you got to keep the law. And then when they get tight, they be like, well, you just got to do the best you can. When have you ever, have we ever, we just read through the law, right? You, you reading with her, you reading with her. We read through the law. Did one time, did we hear y'all talk about anything about the best you can do? Like he the darn Navy. The Army. The Army? Yeah, yeah like he the darn Army. Talking about some darn best you can do. Be the best, what is it, the best you can be? Be all that you can be. Be all that you can darn be. He's never said, that's never been one of his phrases. He never TM that thing. You know what I'm talking about? Everything with him is, you have to do it all. That's why Moses, read it one more time. Watch what Moses said. Cursed be he that confirmed not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, amen. So now we have to reconcile this because if we put ourselves in this moment, it sounds like Yahushua is saying, even the people that break the least of the kingdom will be blessed. I mean, uh, the least of the commandments will be blessed in the kingdom. That's how it sounds, right? And that would be a contradiction to Moses. So how does this work? He already told you how it works. If Moses said that you have to die for breaking the commandment, guess what you got to do? Gotta die. You got to die. And if Yahushua said after you die, he will bring you back to life, then guess what? You will live. Why do you think the man has to resurrect you? Because what Moses said got to be true. He ain't contradicting Moses. He is fulfilling what Moses talked about. He got to kill all y'all. He got to kill every one of us. Because that's what Moses said got to happen. And after he get done with what Moses said got to happen, guess what? Everybody who I want to get up, get your butt on up. He's giving us something new. This is new. You still got to follow through. Moses still, mo whatever Moses say, still grab a uh, whole, whole, we got grab John chapter three, verse 16. Then after that, give me John chapter five. We already read this stuff, but I want to remind y'all, right? Because the whole time he's been telling us stuff, but the more we read, the more some of the stuff he told us is going to make sense. This is John chapter three. Verse 16, and after that, I want John chapter 5. I don't know what verse, maybe verse 43, 42. Right? This is John chapter 3, verse 16. Watch this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's new. Watch this. For God sent his Son, for God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So if Yahushua didn't come to condemn the world, let's see who did. He that believe on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. He said, if you don't believe, you were already condemned. How in the world were they already condemned? 
I have no idea who could have condemned them. Let's go to John chapter five. This is John chapter five. I think I want maybe verse. Forty. One, maybe. You know what I'm looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Might be verse. Uh, might be 30, I guess 38, maybe. You want uh do not think I will accuse you to the father. Uh, yeah. Or if you believe Moses. Yeah. 45. 45. This is uh John chapter five, verse 45. Watch the book say. Do not think that I will accuse you to the father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom you trust. So he's telling you you're already condemned and Moses is the one who condemned you. You were condemned before I got here. That's what Solomon is talking about in Ecclesiastes. He's telling you, like, look, only thing you got ahead of you is a darn grave, boy. And in the grave, they don't do no darn thinking. They don't do no darn loving. They don't do no bar hating. Your, your jealousy is even gone because you don't have any thoughts at all. You, you don't think anything. He's telling you that is the end of everybody's life. Why? Because we've all sinned. Right? When Solomon was, so Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes, right? That same Solomon, when he was praying to Yahuwah, when he was dedicating the uh, temple, he dedicated the temple. And in his prayer, he said, when a man sinneth, and he stopped himself, he said, because there's no one who sinneth not. He knew that everybody sinned. So if everybody sinned, and if Moses is saying, cursed is anybody who don't continue in all this law to do it. In other words, cursed is everybody who sinned, right? And curse means death. Then Moses is saying death to everybody who sinned. Solomon is saying everybody sinned. And then Solomon come back and be like, listen, the only thing you got at the end of your life is the grave, which is death. He's telling you that everybody got to face death. Everybody got to die. So then Yahushua comes back. Let's go back to uh, Matthew. Yahushua comes back and he tells you that to get around that, I'll resurrect you. You got Mo, what Moses say, got to happen. The law still in effect. I didn't come to destroy the law. You know what I'm saying? The law still in effect. So you got to die. But I have an idea. I can bring you back. That way, what Moses said is true and what I say is true. It looked like a contradiction when you don't know the book. Right? But when you pay attention to what the man is saying and you latch on to it, then you see he's not talking about preventing you from dying. He's talking about reversing the curse by after you experience the curse, making it know where it no longer has a sting. He brings your butt right, butt right on back. Right. Grab, uh, grab real quick. Grab Jeremiah chapter 32. 32, 31. Right. Jeremiah chapter 31. Verse, uh, verse 31. Verse 31, 30. Did Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the he land. He said of what now? Not according to what? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. What are we even talking about? Which my covenant they break. So if y'all sure were bringing a new covenant and Jeremiah told us in the prophecy that it's not going to be according to the same covenant that we got with our, uh, in Egypt, then what are we even talking about? Yahushua was bringing something new, but he's telling you, even though I'm bringing something new, it's not to destroy the law and the prophets. So whatever he's teaching us have to live on top of the law and the prophets. Law and, law and prophets still got to work, right? If you paying attention, it's a huge argument in our community all the time. Everybody be like, well, the law done away with. No. You got to keep the law, but the law done away with. No, but you got to keep the law. Be huge argument. Can't nobody get it together, right? But he's giving you the whole game right here. He's telling you the law is not done away with. I didn't come to deal with it. You still got to deal with Moses. Matter of fact, Moses is the one accusing you. And Moses saying that your butt got to die. 
And if you don't believe on me, you already condemned. But if you do believe on me, you going to live forever. Well, how's that going to work? Well, when my voice come out, some people going to hear it and they going to wake up to everlasting life. He's telling you, you're going to die like Moses said, and I'm going to resurrect you like I said. Grab John. Give me John chapter one. This is John chapter one. Give me verse 14. We, we already read John chapter one, verse 14. But again, we read this stuff. It don't make sense. The more you start listening to Yahushua, then it's like, oh, I see what he's saying. This is John chapter one, verse 14. What's the book say? And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahushua the Messiah. No man has seen God at any time. So the law was given by who? Moses. And grace and truth given by who? Yahushua the Messiah. Two different things coming to you. And they both work exactly together. And at the same time, they are not saying the same thing. Right? They are not saying the same thing. They're not teaching the same thing. They're not offering the same promises. They're not expecting the same thing of you. Right? And at the same time, they both in full effect. You got to deal with both of them. Is you're going to be condemned by Moses and if you obey what Yahushua say you're going to be resurrected by him let's go back this is Matthew chapter uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse uh, 19 go ahead wow. oh look at you I like that that is a wonderful question oh that is a wonderful Right on time, too. I didn't plant that question, y'all. <laughs> I did not plant. You know, sometimes, you, you know, you people with a show, they ask a question of the audience, man. They're like, oh, who, who has a question? And then they pick out their friend. And they be like, okay, ask the question I'm already prepared for. You know what I'm saying? I didn't plant this question. I had no idea. I don't even know her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I did not plant it. This is a, no, we're going to talk about that. Um, uh... What did we just grab? Matthew 19. It's Matthew chapter 19. Give me verse 19. Let's I mean see. 5, 19. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. Give me verse 19. Whosoever therefore break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill. And Hold he, on. So let's stop. He said, he said, your, your righteousness has to exceed the Pharisees. What do you think the brothers think that mean? Gotta keep the law. You got to keep the law. Why they think that? Because the Pharisees did. In their mind, man, the Pharisee kept the law, brother. Them boy kept the law. You got to keep the law. You got to be better at keeping the law than them. Crazy. If y'all think the Pharisees kept the law, you lost your darn mind. You ain't seen one place where Yahushua's opinion of the Pharisees that they were law keepers. We're going to learn. Yahushua is going to have a lot to say about the Pharisees. We're going to see it First. at what point, at any time, do he say, but y'all be keeping the law, though. What's that? Uh, chapter 25, Matthew 25. 25 is one of them. Yeah, 20, 25 to one. He let him, 20, yeah, he let him have it. After 25 to one. <laughs> he let him we have might have to, yeah, sometimes I jump around a different book, but we, yeah, we might have to stick in Matthew for that one. <laughs> yeah, he, 25 going to be the one when we get there. Right? Uh, keep going, though. Right? When he say exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, he is not talking about keeping the law. He just got done telling you the least in the kingdom can get in by breaking some of the law. And then he told you, but you could be great in the kingdom. If you keep the law, then he says, but in any wise, you have to exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. He calls the Pharisees hypocrites. So we're going to come back to this because right now it's like, OK, whatever that means. But when we read more about what he think about the Pharisees, we're going to come back to this and be like, oh, I get what he's saying. 
All right. Keep going. This is uh, what, 22? 21? 21. You have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Right? So he said, thou shalt not kill, and whoever shall kill will be in danger of the judgment. Well, who says thou shalt not kill? Uh, Moses. He said, you've heard it said, thou shalt not kill, and whoever kills should be in danger of the judgment. But, Watch what y'all shoot. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. He said, if you angry with your brother and you ain't got a reason for it. You know what I'm talking about? If you sitting there mad at your brother and you ain't got a reason for it, guess what? You in danger of the darn judgment. Watch this. Whosoever shall say unto his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. Or what else? But whosoever shall say, thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Right? So if you curse your brother, you cuss your brother out, right? That's what he's talking about. It's like saying cuss words, up, right? If you cuss your brother out, right, then you in danger of the judgment, right? He's telling you, oh, no, no, let me take it a step further. I know y'all heard from Moses. Let me take it again. I'm bringing something new. Watch. Keep going. Thou, but whosoever shall say thou. Oh, wait, hold on. To answer your question. In danger of the what? Hellfire. So now that's where hell came from. This is this is the very first mention of it. That's why I was happy you asked. I'm like, well, he's about to mention it right now for the very first time. Right? So this is the very first mention of hellfire. But it's not hellfire. Right? If we was reading it in the original language, it doesn't say hellfire. It says the fire of I mean, uh, the, the fire of Hinnom, right? The Valley of Hinnom. The Valley of Hinnom, we've talked about already. Y'all probably don't remember it, but the Valley of Hinnom is something that... Um, I think they used to sacrifice their kids. Already. That's where they used to sacrifice mm -hmm. the kids. So y'all told us, do not sacrifice our kids to Molech. Right? Grab uh, Jeremiah chapter 32. This is Jeremiah chapter 32 because it's, it's important. So this is something that by the translators changing henna to hell just to kind of fit tradition, right? This is something that we lose, right? We lose a little history when we do this, but he doesn't say hell, right? This is, the, this is the translators put hell there. Really, he said the fire of the valley of henna, right? And in Greek, it's kind of pronounced, translated as Gehenna, right? But it's the Valley of the uh, of Hinnom. Let's read about the Valley of Hinnom. This is Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 33. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 33. And they, can't, and they have turned unto me the back and not the face, though I taught them, rising up early and teaching them. Yet they have not hearkened to receive instruction. But they set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name to devile it. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Right, in the valley where? Of the son of Hinnom. To cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto To do Molech. what? To cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech. So which now, commanded them not. this is imagery that Yahushua is giving. This place, grab, uh, grab uh, Second Chronicles chapter 28. I just want to show y'all that this, this place is mentioned many times. Throughout the Old Testament, and it's almost mentioned every time for the exact same thing. This is Second uh, Chronicles, chapter twenty-eight. Uh, we can start at verse one. But he's giving you imagery, right? He's not saying the Valley of Hell, which we already have associated hell to what he's talking about. But that's not what he was saying. He was giving them Im imagery that they would clearly understand, right? We always had an issue with people taking their children and burning their own children as a sacrifice to this God called Molech. And everyone would do, it, do this in the Valley of Hinnom. And they would take them and they burn them there. So he's saying, man, listen, if you even hate your brother, you, would, you, you in danger of the fire of Hinnom. They looking at that like, that's when people take their kids and burn their kids. I'm a child of God. Oh, God going to burn me like they be burning. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's a different image that you take that, that he has. He's like, oh, that's the father. 
this, that, and the other, da, 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 you'll be a child of God. But uh, you'll be in danger of the valley of Hinnom if you, it's like, oh, I see what you're trying to say. Right? This is uh, second, second Chronicles chapter 28, verse 1. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. So this is King Ahaz. Watch this. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, but he did not that which was right in the sight of Yahuwah like David his father. What did he do? For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Baal. Oh, he made molten images. Sheesh, that's against our law. What else? Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He did what? He burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Whew, at least he didn't burn his kids. And burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom Yahuwah had cast out before the children of Israel. He also burnt his children. Right? So this is this is this is where the concept that we understand hell came from, because it's talking about uh the the fire of Hinnom. You know what I'm saying the fire that was in, in the valley of Hinnom. So the way that they end up translating that into hell is because historically Hell is talking about an underworld, right? So it's talking about the grave, right? When you hell is used in the in the in the Old Testament, it's used in the scripture a lot, right? But it's talking about it's talking Sheol. about the underworld, Sheol, right? It's talking about the underworld, it's talking about being in a grave, right? So because that is that's the idea of death, right? It's like that's the punishment for for afterlife is hell. Then they started to say, okay, well, now the new punishment with Yahushua is burning forever. So they just start calling hell. Now the fire, right? They call it the hell fire. But in reality, there's no con there's no scriptural concept of hell fire. Those are two very different things. One is just being buried in the ground, and the other one is saying there's fire of Gehenna, and then that's gonna expound even more when we get to Revelations, right? Revelations is going this is he just kind of introducing the idea, and right now it's a small thing in everybody's mind. It's like, oh, there's this valley where everybody burns. They're, they're killed children at, and we know we're not supposed to do that. Yahushua is telling us we're in danger of that type of fire if, you know what I'm saying, if we don't do what we're supposed to do. Okay, good. So that's still like a very small concept, like, oh, maybe, no, I don't know exactly what he means by that, but, you know, whatever. When we get to Revelations, he's going to make it very clear. You know what I'm saying? He's going to make it very clear exactly what this fire is, exactly what it means, and exactly how long it lasts, which is forever. Spoiler alert. All right? Keep going. Uh, this is uh, go back to Matthew. It's Matthew chapter 5, wherever we 22. left off. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. Die first. All right. Yeah, buddy. Stakes is higher, right? So with Moses, you have two options you live. Or you die. Remember when Moses was talking? Moses said, I set before you this day. Right? I'll call heaven and earth to witness. I set before you this day. What he said before us? Life and death. Life or death. Those were your two options. You keep all the commandments, you have life. Right? You don't keep all the commandments, you have death. Those are the two options. So when Yahushua came back, he said, I have something better than what Moses offered you. I'll offer you everlasting life. But if I have something better on the promise side, I got to give you something better on the curse side, right? So instead of just death, now you burn forever, right? And so we're going to get more into that as we, as we continue on through the gospel. Really, really, it's not going to be the gospel to explain oh, that. Awesome, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be the, the epistle letters that, that first go into that a little bit more. And then Revelations is going to be the one that kind of give you a full image of, of what we're talking about. Uh, this is uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 22. 23. 23. It's Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. Watch there, the book say. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar and there remembers that thy brother has ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, then come and give thy gift. Mm -hmm. Agree with thine adversary quickly while you are in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and cast you into prison. Verily I say unto thee, you shall by no means come out of there till you have paid the uttermost farthing. All right, so he's saying it's better to work stuff out you, between you and your brother than to take it to somebody else where they're going to exalt, you know what I'm saying, exert some type of punishment over what, what happened. 
And then if you end up losing that punishment, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be worse on you. You should have just worked it out with your brother beforehand, right? Keep going. You have heard that it was said by of all time, you shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Right? That wasn't in the law. Wasn't no law against looking on a woman. Right? But now, y'all, she was saying, what I'm telling you is a little different. Don't even look on her with lust. Right? If you do that, guess what? You've already committed adultery in your own darn heart. Right? Keep going. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Mm -hmm. That's imagery as well. He's saying, listen, if, in other words, he's saying, don't have no excuses. If he's saying, like, man, my hand made me do what I did. You know what I'm saying? My hand made me sin. He is like, well, cut it off then. Right? If you can't control your darn hand, cut it off. Because guess what? It would be better for you to have no hand going into the kingdom than the darn burn forever. Read it again. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. Mm -hmm. And again, and when they say right hell, it's talking about the valley of Hinnom. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Cast in the valley of Hinnom, right? Keep going. It hath been said, whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, except for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. Right? So everybody who on their second marriage, third marriage, fourth marriage, I hate to tell you, you know what I'm saying? I hate to tell y'all online listening. Listen, I just hate to look. I hate to break it to you. This the this is the hardest one. I hate to break it. I look. I hate to break it. This is the hardest. You one got I'm married. I really hate to break it. This is definitely the hardest one. You still married to the first? All right, you still married to the first one. The one you with now, you committed adultery, and you causing her to commit adultery, and you causing your wife to commit adultery too. Because when you divorced her, she went out and she probably got her somebody else too. All y'all committed adultery. New woman you got, your wife, her new husband or her new boyfriend, and you, right? All y'all can be the whole game, just a whole bunch of adultery based off of your decision. So now your options are go back to the first one, make it right, and I know you can't stand her. Oh, you can't stand her, but oh, good gracious, good riddance. You you were so happy when she, when y'all look when y'all split and she signed them papers. Your butt was so you never been happier to pay a little alimony. You know what I'm saying? But listen, I hate to tell you, your options are go back and make it right with her. Which, if it's a bad situation, little mama, if 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 he putting his hands on you and all that, and that's why you left, and that's why you got up on there, don't go back. But nevertheless, your options are go back or. Remain reconciled. Don't touch nobody. Don't mess around with nobody. You just got to be alone until, guess what? Until he die. And it is okay for you to pray for him to die, especially he's been putting his hands on you. Definitely okay for you to pray. Be like, listen, y'all, go ahead and take him out. I need somebody new. Don't you try to make it happen now. You just got to request that y'all do whatever he's going to do. Let him judge the situation. Never it play out, it play out. But that's the only option. I know, and I, I know it sucks because it's like, I know you love the new one. Y'all been together. Y'all might have been together for years. Probably got kids together. It's a mess. It really is. But it don't change. How you feel does not change what the word says. And it's a tough one. I'm joking. I'm like making light of it. But in real life, if you was, whoever you are, if you were standing in front of me, I would be delivering this message with a lot of like moving. I'd be like, ah, well. <laughs> Trying to make it sound like <laughs> so, brother. Uh, you want to have see you need some water? Let me go. Let me go get some water. I'll be procrastinating, trying to, trying to. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so now I mean we got to talk about it, but why don't we uh finish watching this TV show first? You know what I'm saying? Like all types of stuff because it's a tough one. It is a tough one, but be advised and be clear. This is exactly what you think it's saying. Like when you read this, you be saying that can't mean what I think it means. No, no, no. It means exact. The first thing that came to your mind when you read that, is that trying to say that I'm in sin? That's exactly what it means. Right? It means exactly what you thought it meant when you read it for the first time. 
I know that you you could look. You probably just right now you are in your other tab searching, trying to find somebody else's opinion on this very topic. And you're going to find it. it's there. Right. You have all types of opinion. No, fornication is actually another word for adultery. So if your wife committed adultery, then you can you can divorce her. I know. I know what they're saying. That's not true. You know that they're lying to you. It's OK. We got a we got a two part special. You can read all about it. two part special. Look it up on the page. It's called marriage part one and marriage part two. We go through all of it. But you and sin ain't nothing. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, nothing, ain't no other way around. You and sin. Keep going. Watch, watch what y'all should say. Again, you have heard that it has been said by them of all time, you shall not forswear thyself, but shall perform unto Yahuwah thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. So Nor Sharon said, I'm hurting feelings tonight. I don't feel like it's fair. Y'all, you were the one who said, I got to take. Why I got to take the, you know what I'm saying? This, we all read it together. I ain't making it up. Like, it ain't like these my words. If it, let me, let me make something very clear to y'all. If that was not in the word, let me tell you how the line I would stand in to never mention it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't, if, if it wasn't there, trust me, it would not be my idea to be like, make everybody feel like they're a sinner for having the second wife. Please, it wouldn't be none of my darn me. You happy? That's all. You know what She treat you right. All right. That's all it. I wouldn't care, but it's there. I can't pretend like the book is there. I got to I can't just teach the parts that I like. The I can't just. I look like uh, what's the man name? What's uh, the one that only want to teach Joel, about Joel Osteen? Him too. But what's the other one? The old school oh, Billy Graham. Billy Graham. Billy Graham. I'd be darn Billy Graham if I'm talking Billy Graham on an interview. I saw an interview from Billy Graham. He gonna say he oh, he had the nerve to say, listen, I choose to teach about the favor of God. Not the death and the gloom. <laughs> I said, must be nice. <laughs> that must be darn nice. You just talk about the good stuff and get all these people to come in and pay you all this money. Right? I could do that. But we're not doing that. That's not what we're here for. If I was doing that, I'm doing it for my own glory. Right? Only thing I want to do is bring glory to the most high God in this word. That's it. That's why every time y'all talk, it's listen to the book. See what the book say. That's what I'm talking Every time you hear me talk, I'm bringing you back to what the scriptures say. Let's see. Keep going. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Right. He said, don't swear at all. Don't he? Is that what Moses said? No. This is uh grab uh Deuteronomy chapter six real quick. Deuteronomy chapter six, verse 13. Basically, don't be like, oh my mama, man. I swear. I swear I'm gonna do it. I'm doing that. It's Deuteronomy chapter six, verse 13. Stop putting your stop putting stuff on your mama. I swear to God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> look, look, it's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. Thou shalt fear Yahuwah thy God and serve him and shall swear by his name. And shall what? Swear by his name. Moses commanded you, if you gonna swear, it gotta be by Yah's name. That was a commandment, right? But watch what Yahweh Shua say. Go back. Them boys kept on breaking their oath. Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall you swear by thy head, because you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, or nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these comes of evil. Right? He's trying to give you game. He said, listen, I get it. You're going to feel compelled to convince somebody. And you're going to say, listen, I swear by Jerusalem. Right? I swear by the temple. I swear by heaven. I swear by all the earth. I'm going to do this. And he's telling you, listen, your lying butt ain't going to do half of the stuff that you say. I know you believe it when you say it, but you're just bringing evil on you. He's telling you, 
by doing those swears and you're doing those vows, right? What you're really doing is you're bringing evil on you from God. Because as soon as you get to swearing by all this stuff and you don't keep it, well, now you got a curse on you. So he said, all this stuff just come from evil. <laughs> just If you're going to say yes, just say yes. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to say no, just say no. Just leave it at that. Like, man, can you do this for me? Yes. That's it. I know you got the urge to be like, man, I swear I'm going to do it. Don't even worry about it. If he doubt you, if your man's be like, man, you ain't going to do it. I can't trust you. You know what I'm saying? I left T at the airport one time. You know what I'm saying? I think foul. still feel bad about it. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? If he be like, bro, are you sure this time? I can't even. Now, I'm going to want to be like, man, look, I swear to. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to want to. But I can't. You know what I'm saying? I just got to be like, yes, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I will. This time I really will do it. You know what I'm saying? Most you can say is, truly, truly, I say to you. You know what I'm saying? I will be at the airport on time. You know what I mean? But that's how that's how we set it up. He's trying to help you out. We look at this. Y'all said, if you're going to swear, swear by my name. Right? Only by my name. Don't swear by nobody else's name. Only by my name. Y'all, she was like, look, just making a darn bet. Don't, just don't, don't even, just don't swear by anything. Just Shut up. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're going to do it, just do it. Just go ahead and do it, but leave it at that. Right? Keep going. Matthew, back at Matthew. Matthew uh, chapter 5, what verse? We are on 38. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38. What's the book say? You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue with thee the law, with, if, if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Mm -hmm. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give him that asks of thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. You have heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Why do you think he's saying that? That you may be children of your father which is in heaven. He's telling you this because naturally you're going to want to take vengeance. All this stuff that he's telling you is he's saying put yourself in a position to do the opposite that you would naturally want to do. If somebody slap you across your face, naturally you're going to want to slap them back. But he's saying don't take that vengeance because that's going to get you in trouble. If you want to be perfect, give them the other cheek and let them smack you, smack you again. Right? I jumped ahead, but watch this. That ye may be the children of your father which is in heaven. For he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Mm -hmm. For if you love them that love you, what reward do you have? Mm -hmm. Do not even the publicans the same? Mm -hmm. And if you salute your brothers only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans do so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which, in which is in heaven is perfect. He said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is, it, which is in heaven is perfect. Everything that he just told us is a, a roadmap to perfection. Right? He just gave us a roadmap to perfection. A lot of people think being perfect, it's impossible to be perfect. That's not true. It's not impossible. Right. He actually said, this is how you you accomplish perfection. This is how you accomplish being the greatest in the kingdom. Right. Is by following all those things. This is not the commandment or the bare minimum. Right. That's not what he's saying, because perfection is not the bare minimum. He already told you that you could break even the least of some of these commandments. Right. So perfection is not the bare minimum. What he's saying is the bare bare minimum is. Uh, we haven't actually got to the specifics yet, but we're going we gonna to end up getting to the specifics of the bare minimum, bare minimum where he gives us the specific sins that we got to turn away from. Right. And when we turn away from those sins, which are documented in Matthew, uh, Mark chapter seven, they documented in uh, Ephesians chapter six, um, uh, Galatians chapter five, first Corinthians six, first, uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter five, first Corinthians chapter six. Um, in Revelation, Revelation chapter 22, right? In all those chapters, you have the, the specific commandments that will not enter into the kingdom, right? That is the bare minimum. You turn away from those things and you can see life. However, if you want to be perfect, you do these things that Yahushua just said. 
Somebody ask something of you, give it to them. Matter of fact, give them more. Somebody steal something from you, let them have it, and then give them more. Right? That's perfection. That puts yourself in a mindset that you don't care about anything in this world. The only thing you care about is the righteousness that comes from the Father. And if you have that mind and that type of focus to where none of the vanity stuff that Solomon is talking about in Ecclesiastes, none of that stuff is even a worry to you because now you're not only looking forward to death. Solomon is telling you, enjoy the things of this life because it ain't nothing after this. Right. Yahushua is telling you, I have a plan. I'm going to bring you back. So now stop worrying about the stuff in this life. It is much more later. Just do what I say. And that's the transition. This is the new wine that he's given. And if you try to put this new wine in the old wine skins, they will burst. And it's a lot of Hebrew brothers that's not realizing that they filling up a bursting wine skin right now. That they don't understand this book. They think they understand the law, but they don't. They haven't understood the law. They don't have no teachers that understand the law. All them people that they look up to now teach them garbage, complete crap, right? Teach them all these bad theories, all these bad doctrines, all this made up stuff. They just Christians with tassels. That's it. Law keeping Christians that got tassels on, fancy little gold tassels. We're gonna keep reading through the gospel next week. We're gonna jump into chapter se- uh, chapter six. Six. Yeah, we're gonna jump into chapter six tomorrow. Um and and get into it. Then we are gonna get into chapter seven after that. You know I'm saying and and I think chapter seven is the end of of his teaching in this fashion or in this, this part. Are there any questions? No questions for you. No questions for you. No questions for you. All right. Any questions online? No, Sister Sharon. On God is not cool. (laughs) (laughs) No, Tyro. I don't want to hear your (laughs) mixtape. Fellowship call tomorrow, 4 o'clock. I might be a tad bit late. Uh, Maybe like five minutes late. Five, maybe ten minutes late. But I'm going to try to be on time. Um, But yeah, fellowship call tomorrow. I will see y'all there. Four o'clock Pacific time. Uh, If you don't have the link, reach out to me. You can use the email or the text that is right here. Email or the text is right here. Or the Twitter that's right there. You can reach out to me here. Um, And... uh, and we'll get through it. I don't see any questions. So let's pray out. Have a peace, y'all.